this is our agenda. We will talk about the DFR or dielectric frequency response fundamentals. We'll talk about DFR applications. We'll give you some tips about DFR and best practices to do some testing in the field. We will look at the interpretation of DFR results. And finally, we will wrap up the presentation talking and uh, giving you some guidelines to prioritize the transform maintenance activities in the field using this excellent tool, which is dielectric frequency response. So let's start from the fundamentals. Dielectric frequency response, basically, this is an offline test. You guys have to be de-energized, disconnected, fully isolated from the line. So you will be testing only your transformers, which has to be discharged, properly isolated. You will follow any safety security measurements or recommendations applied in that substation, utility, or wherever you are running the test. Basically, what we are doing here, we're following the same principle as power factor or dissipation factor testing. What are we doing here? We are applying a voltage. We're measuring a current. We are creating two electrodes between the insulation system by shorting high voltage side of our transformer, low voltage side of our transformer, and the other electrode that we have in the system will be ground. So always remember about it, good connections, quite important for you. The principle, as I was telling you, for power factor and dielectric frequency response is the same. We are measuring complex impedance. We have a reactive component. We have a resistive component, which is representing the losses. And from here, we identify this cosine phi angle, which represents the power factor. Based on this, the difference will be that when we do this dielectric frequency response analysis, we will run several power factor tests at different frequencies, going from high frequencies at about 1 kilohertz all the way down to 1 millihertz. So remember, of course, that power factor testing is frequency dependent. So every time we change the frequency, we will change the value of the capacitive reactants we are measuring, therefore the complex impedance, and of course the power factor value that we are obtaining at the end. Also to remember is that the the analysis is based on, on a database which is used to correlate the measured values to the existing empirical analysis. In this case, we are validating the response with the XY model, which has been internationally already accepted. What are we trying to do with dielectric frequency response? Fundamentally, we are looking at the moisture concentration in the solid insulation of this complex insulation system in our power transformer. We can look as well at the power factor or dissipation factor and or the conductivity of the liquid insulation, in this case mineral oil, or if you guys are using any different type of uh, uh, ester oils, or even if the transformer is without oil, you can consider the surrounding environment just to be air. The other one will be to look at the power factor at 60 hertz. And as you know, we need to uh, normalize the power factor value. If we, if we run the test at a different temperature other than 20 degrees C, then we have to normalize in, in order to be able to do some trending analysis in the future. So this normalization or this correction of the power factor at 60 hertz, now with the technology of DFR, it's been improved. And now we are not looking just at table correction factors. We are looking at what we call the individual temperature correction, or the ITC, which is a feature only provided by dielectric frequency response. As you can see here, this is a typical screen of the software showing you the dielectric response, which is basically on the x-axis, you have the frequency. And on the y-axis, you have the power factor value or the dissipation factor uh, value. On the bottom, you will see the results, the capacitance, the measured capacitance, the measured power factor or dissipation factor, and the corrected values to 20 degrees C, the moisture percentage, and the conductivity of the oil. We're looking at moisture affecting the life, the service life of our transformers. 